everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to color the skin on this beautiful portrait by Mariella Boudek. This one is called Yasmin and it is available in her Etsy store. If you're interested, I'll have a link down below in the description box. I have some colors chosen and I don't know which ones I'm going to use yet. I just threw some colors out here that I would generally use for skin. And I wanna try something a little bit different today because I wanna be able to add some highlights uh, to her face because this is more, I don't know, this is a little bit different than what you've seen on my channel because usually I am coloring skin on an image that is more, I guess, a cartoony style and so this one is much more realistic and I really want to make her look more realistic and I think that I'm going to try to follow the grayscale and the different shades of gray that the artist has already added onto this image so that means that I may be coloring this one a little bit different than what you may have seen me color before because I would generally probably lay my colors a little bit differently than how I'm seeing the grayscale laid out on this image. So if you want to see a skin tutorial, stick around. And if you check the description box below, you will find links down there to my Facebook group, my email list, my Etsy store, and I am now offering private coloring classes. I would love for you to join me for one. They are all happening via Zoom. And I have also opened up my group coloring classes and all of the information for the group coloring classes. I've been posting the dates and such in my Facebook group. And so people are signing up for those. If you would like to join me for a private coloring class or a group coloring class, you can email me at coloringwithpamela at gmail.com. Tom, let's go ahead and get into this video. I've zoomed you in so we can go ahead and get started. Now, I don't know how much of her skin I am going to be able to uh, color in this video because the length of the video may go pretty long. Some of it may be set to music, but I am going to do the tutorial part of it so that you can really understand why I'm laying the colors where I'm laying them. I will also share my thought process with you as I lay the colors down on the paper so that you could sort of get an idea of what is going on inside my head as I lay the colors down and make certain choices and such. I think that my idea for her skin is to give her some highlights on her face. So these areas where you see a whole lot of highlights, like right here under her eye, I think I'm gonna use, I'm sort of wishing that I would use the tone tan paper because I think this would have looked so amazing on tone tan, but I actually found a great deal on this paper. If you saw my shop with me video, um, I was shopping at Michael's and I found a great buy one get one free deal on this paper and I actually went back to Michael's the next day and picked up two more pads of this paper because it is wonderful. <laughs> So let's go ahead and get started with this coloring now. So here, and if you didn't already see the uh, hair tutorial, I will link that in the upper right hand corner. If you wanna follow along with this, I do plan to color the entire page. So here where I see that there is a lot of highlights all in and around this area, I wanna go ahead and lay my white and I'll probably blend in a little bit of the cream because I, absolutely love using the cream when I am doing portraits just to add a little bit of highlights in those areas. Like I said, I'm going to follow the grayscale. So this one is going to be a little bit different than what I would normally do, but I just want to show you all that you can follow the grayscale on an image and create something absolutely beautiful. So this is light peach and I'm gonna let you know what colors I'm using as I go through and lay the colors down. I don't wanna lay too much of this, and you're gonna notice that I will be going very, very slow as I lay the colors because I don't wanna mess her up because <laughs> I put a whole lot of work into her hair. So over in here, I'm going to lay this peach all in and around where her hair is, and normally when I'm doing eyebrows, 
and usually on a more cartoony image, I would make it a little bit darker above her eyebrows, but I want her eyebrows again to look a little more natural. So I'm not gonna do that on this one. I'm gonna come back and actually color in her eyebrows later. I've got some beige colors over here because I don't want the colors that I use on her skin to take away from her hair because her hair is so fiery red and gorgeous that I didn't want her skin to blend in with her hair. I want her uh, skin to still stand out and I want her hair to stand out. And if you notice, I'm just doing this with the light peach in all of the areas where I see a shadow on the grayscale. And I'm staying out of all of the other areas and I'm using this as a layer basically because as you know with colored pencils we are going to go through and we are going to apply layers and that is how you build up the color and over here around her nose there is lots of shadowed areas or darker gray so I'm gonna make sure that I shade all of that in and of course I'm gonna come back in with a darker color in these areas and really intensify that color as I start to build the layers. Now I'm coming back with my peach and I'm going to start laying this color as another layer in all the same areas where I just now laid my lighter peach. Now I'm just piling some layers so that we can make sure we've got a little more color down here on her skin. And again, I'm just following the grayscale. Now we're gonna come in here on her nose and we are going to lay some of this color all in the areas where this shade of grayscale is. I guess this is more of the medium tone of grayscale and I'm probably gonna come in here with another color as I lighten up and come into the top of her nose here. I wanna keep this area of her nose where I could see that there should be a highlight. I want to keep that area just as it is, a highlighted area. And if you push too hard with this peach, it is, you, we all know the Prisma colors are fairly pigmented so if you push too hard with one of the colors and you try to go really fast rather than going slow, you may lay too much color down even though this is a lighter color and then not be happy with it. So I encourage you to really take your time as you go through and do this. I'm wondering, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to look at this and make sure that I didn't go into an area that should be her hair and it looks like it's not, but we have her ear here and we need to make sure that we color that in. And I may do just her face in this video and then I'll come back with the next video and I will do um, the rest of this, all her body and around her tattoos and such. And this blanket, can you see that blanket that is wrapped around her here? I already have an idea for that blanket and I just, I can't wait to color that. And that is going to be another tutorial because I'm, I'm not gonna tell what I'm doing with it right now. <laughs> but that's definitely going to be a tutorial video, the blanket in and of itself. And I think we might have enough of this peach laid down here. I'm gonna come over here and sort of color some of this gray and cover it up just a little bit because all around where the nose is, naturally these areas would be darker just to show that her nose is actually raised from her face. Like all of our noses are. <laughs> They're not flat on our face, right? So, I don't know, sometimes when you're coloring skin, you need to just kind of think about your own face or even pull something up online and see if that inspires you just a little bit. Maybe just, you know, gets those thoughts going in your head as to where you feel like you should start to lay the colors. And even sometimes now when I'm coloring skin, I still get very nervous because, I don't know, skin for me is a more difficult thing to color. 
and I really enjoy coloring skin, but it does require a lot more, I guess, thought and having to be a little bit more creative when I'm laying the colors down. And I don't wanna lay a color down that doesn't look good or blend in right with the other color choices. I think that I am going to, what do I wanna use now? I might, yeah, let's come back again with the light peach. And I'm just going to go over where I laid the peach and sort of pull this down into the areas I want to keep more highlighted. And yeah, I think I'm just going to do just the face today and then do her body in a later video. And that is only because I am due to have a video up tomorrow. And I have been so busy with my coloring classes. Y'all are amazing. I am loving these classes. I love getting to know y'all and putting a face with names and it's just been really, really wonderful. And I think all of you are really loving these classes as well. But I have been holding so many classes <laughs> that I need to stay on the YouTubes too. <laughs> and so I need to have time to be able to edit this because I don't know how many of you realize this, but editing is a chore. Like it takes absolutely hours. No, it just does. And I put a lot of time into the way that I edit my videos and maybe I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and maybe I need to stop that. <laughs> but I like my videos to look good for y'all. I am just going really, really slow. I'm starting on the outside and I'm sort of coming in. If you are a beginner and you want to learn how to color skin, this grayscale, especially Mariola's work, is a great place to start because all I'm doing is following what she's already done for me. <laughs> And then I'm coming back and I'm just blending all of the colors through and I'm piling the layers and I'm just, I'm good, you know, you can see I'm going really, really slow and I'm using the grayscale to just let it naturally guide me in what I'm doing. And it's coming together really nicely so far. Like I said, this is not how I would normally color skin when I am doing a more, you know, I think that's all I have colored for y'all is probably more cartoony stuff. I'll have to go back on my channel and look, but I've never really colored a more realistic portrait and I've not done one that is grayscale. So this is very different for me. Usually I am trying to take a cartoony portrait and make it look realistic. And that is a skill in and of itself. And there's lots of tutorials on my channel of me doing that. So I don't know, maybe, maybe I should put all of my skin tutorials into a playlist and go ahead and you know what, I'm gonna try to do that. I'm gonna try to put all my skin tutorials into a playlist and then I am going to put them in the upper right hand corner so that y'all can find those. I've got lots of hair tutorials and skin tutorials, but again, I've never done something this realistic before. I really like these colors that I've chosen because I don't feel like they're conflicting with the bright, vibrant tones that I have used in her hair. Now I have beige and I'm just going to sort of work a little bit of this color in here and I feel like if I do this, it's going to take out a little bit of that peachy tone. But I wanna sort of even it out just because I wanna make sure that the end product when we're done is not going to, like I said, conflict with her hair. And of course, I'm gonna have to come back and lay more colors down because I'm really going to need to make all the shadowed areas of her face really stand out. And I'm gonna lay over this over here behind her nose where, like I said earlier, should look like it is lifted from her face and over here right under her nose. 
Now I said that I was gonna continue to share all of my thoughts with y'all and I'm just sitting here thinking whether or not I should bring in more more of the cream or if I should just leave that one out and maybe use more of my white for the highlighted areas or maybe even just use the white of the paper for the highlighted areas. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet. And that's why it's so important to continue to go slow because when you don't really know what you want to do, you don't wanna go laying a whole bunch of colors down when you're just unsure still of what you wanna do. And I'm just coming in here and I'm still leaving these highlighted areas, but I wanna lay a little bit of color all in here just to brighten it up a little bit. And I'm doing that with the beige, but I still have plenty of the tooth of the paper left because this paper is absolutely wonderful. And I actually pulled these Prismacolors from my replacement set because they're nice and long and I didn't want my hand to get in the way for this type of tutorial. There's always somebody in the comments that says, your hand's in the way, your hand's in the way. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, I kind of zenned out when I was coloring. <laughs> and a lot of the times when I'm editing, I always try to make sure that I edit that out, but sometimes it's just not possible especially when I'm trying to share with you all of the colors that I'm using as I'm coloring. Now I'm gonna come all through these areas and I'm laying just a very light, very, very light shade of this color as I pull the other colors through just a little bit because you don't ever want your colors to look flat. You want your colors to look very blended. And basically what I'm doing here by adding all these layers is I am combining the colors and so they're just all coming together to create one color of her skin tone, basically. I turned her just a little bit so we have a different angle and I grabbed my Sienna Brown and I'm gonna try a little something here, but I don't know how much of this I'm actually gonna use. And I am just, I'm holding my pencil at the side because I do not want a lot of this laid down at all, but I'm just going to blend a little bit of this in here with my other colors, just like this, just to create a shadow here on this side of her face. You can see that I've laid the color down here. I zoomed you in even a little bit more, but you could see that the color is actually laid down here, but very, very lightly. I am barely touching the paper. And I think I wanna do a little bit up here just to darken it up a little. And I'm gonna come back and I am going to actually blend this or blend another color in with this so that this is not my main color I'm using for shadows. And again, I'm still a little bit unsure about this color because like I said earlier, I don't want, I, I want her skin to be able to stand out from her hair. And this color does have orange in it. So adding this color, I'm going to have to bring something else in to sort of take some of that color away. And then down in this area as well, just to create that shadow. And I don't wanna do too much. And then I think I'm gonna do some down here at the bottom as well. my beige Prisma color again and I am going to come over all of the areas where I laid that color so that I can blend it in just a little bit more and the pressure behind my hand or behind my pencil rather is a little bit harder now. Now I 
have my chocolate Prismacolor and I'm going to use this just to create a few more shadows. And as I do this, I'm going to go ahead and speed it up to music again. And again, I'm going to come back with my beige and I'm going to pull some of that color through that I just laid down in all of those areas. I'm just going to go over every single bit of it and what this is going to do is just sort of mask that color that I laid down and look at, make it look more like it's blended in and not so harsh. come back with my peach and I'm going to start pulling all of these colors together that I have laid down so far and I'm using this color just because I want to give her a little bit more of color to her skin without her looking too flat or having too much of those other tones in her skin that all sort of look the same as they're coming together. I feel like this will just add a little bit more of that peachy tone back to her skin and pull in some of these darker colors that I had laid down and make them look a little bit more natural. I love how the peach looks once it is blended together with the beige. And like I said earlier, after all of these colors come together, it will look dramatically different. And as you can see, I'm sort of staying out of the areas that I want to keep a little bit of a highlight. I'm trying to figure out what color I want to use for her lips. I want them to really, really stand out. And I'm wondering, I don't know, maybe they should just be more natural. I've never done that before. So we'll have to see what happens. <laughs> I think I want a little bit more of a highlight over here in this area. I think I came over too far. So when you do that, and the other thing I wanted to tell you all about this paper, this Strathmore colored pencil paper, I want you to see how easily the pigment is going to pick up. And make sure that you've got, this eraser that I'm using is absolutely wonderful. And the name is all torn off, but it's called Fractice or something like that. And I will link it down in the description box below. But watch this, how the pigment just lifts up off the paper when I come in here. And I've got a lot of layers down here, y'all. But look at that. It just instantly came up. And so I just want to make this highlighted area just a little bit bigger. And I feel like I just came in a little bit too close to the area I wanted to keep lighter. And so now I can come back with my light peach and I can blend some of those colors out and pull them in with an even lighter color just to keep that area highlighted that I wanted highlighted. And I'm still trying to figure out as I think about this and the colors come together, I'm trying to figure out if I want to use my cream in those areas or if I want to keep them more along the lines of a bright white, giving her that actual white highlight in these areas like down here on her chin, over here above her mouth, and right here above her or the, the top part of her nose. 
And I don't know, I probably I think I followed the grayscale here, but I don't know. When I look at this, I think that more of this area here should be white. We'll see how, not necessarily white, but a lighter tone. We'll see how it all comes together. And I kind of want to add a little bit of color to her, like makeup or something. I just don't really know yet what color I want to use to be able to not contrast too much with her hair. And I'm using this light peach just to sort of blend all of these colors in because I've got a good amount of layers down here already. And I want to see how all of these colors look once they are blended together and where I may need to lay some more shadows and some of these darker areas. And then I still need to figure out what I'm going to do with the highlighted areas. I just showed you all how easy it is to pull the pigment up. So I'm wondering, I think I need a little bit more color over in here, close to her hair. This is the light peach, but I wanted to just sort of blend that out just a little bit. And I'm thinking, let me try this and see. That That's the whole point about when you're coloring something and you're just not really sure. It's a lot of fun to experiment with what you're doing and see what looks good. And I always love this cream for highlights, but I see a lot of people coloring skin and leaving a lot of the areas white. But for me, when I'm coloring skin, I just love this cream color and I think it looks good. So I'm gonna go around and all of these areas where I have that or those highlights or where I kept the white of the paper, I'm going to add the cream in here because that's what I want to do. <laughs> and y'all can do what you want to do if you're coloring this along with me. If you want to leave those areas a little bit more white and not add this cream to those areas, then you can do that but I just think it looks super, super cool when this color is added in when you're doing skin. It's one of my favorite colors to add in for those highlights. And I don't, if you notice, I'm not putting it all the way inside those areas. I'm just sort of laying it over where I want the highlight. And see there how I didn't pull it all the way down into the eyebrow and I still left some of that white? And then over here, I'm going to add a little bit just to the edge, but I'm not going to pull it all the way through. And I really love how this is looking. You see how it just really added that pop of color and it just blends right in with everything else we have going on. And in some of the areas where you have the darker shades, like you could see what I'm doing right now, I'm using this to bring all of those colors together in the areas where the colors are darker. And it's just adding a little bit of color to those areas. Here where I'm above her lips, I'm not bringing the color all the way down, I'm just intensifying that highlighted area just a bit. And you could see all the white I still left here and you could even come back with your white Prismacolor and go over that if you wanted to be really daring, you can come back with a Posca pen and even change it up even more. And like I said, when you're coloring skin, just go really slow and don't get too carried away in what you're doing because you don't want to get too carried away and then be disappointed in what you did. But this color, as you can see, is also great for skin if you're trying to burnish out the colors. Now, this is just kind of my own thing. I that's not necessarily something that I've seen other people do when they're coloring skin with the this cream color. And I kind of like now how her nose looks all through this area. And I don't know, I might even come back later and lift a little bit of that, but I think it looks good. And again, I just followed the grayscale because you could see the grayscale was a little bit darker in this area as it comes through over here at the top of her nose. And I didn't make my shadowed areas look too dramatic, so I can still come back if I want to, and I can intensify all those shadows 
And if you're not using too much pressure with your pencil, you can keep coming back and you can keep adding color if you want to. But with this portrait, I wanted her skin to be very, very pale. Let me see what I can add in here just to intensify some of those shadows. Do I want to use the chocolate again? Let me experiment with the bright umber. Now, like I said earlier, if you do something and you don't like the way that it turns out, you can use that eraser and you can just really lift the color up. Your other option is to use this Mono Zero eraser. This is my other absolute favorite eraser. And maybe we'll go ahead and try this. I think I have a little bit of color. You want to make sure that this, that the tip of the mono eraser is very, very white before you apply that to your coloring page, especially when you're coloring skin because you don't want color from something else to come off on your skin. So I just erased with it off to the side just a little bit. And so you can see that it is nice and white now. I've got a white tip and let's go ahead and see I don't know what I have that I want to erase. I just really want to be able to test this out. How about right over here making this a little bit lighter? But look how fabulous this eraser is. And then you just blow the pigment out of the way. Or not the pigment, the erasers. And the pigment that's coming up, I would guess. So I'm going to try my light umber and I'm gonna see how many shadows I can create with this light umber. And I'm just gonna go around her face and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna speed this portion up to music so y'all can watch what I'm doing. I think I want to try something a little bit different that I've really never done before and over here where these areas are here where the highlights are I think I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to lay my white down and I'm going to pull all these colors together and start burnishing them together and I don't know if I laid any color down in here let me come back here and put a little color in this area because okay so that was my what was that that was my beige that I just picked up and I think that maybe we should add a little bit of peach in there just to give her some color. I think actually I need a little more peach in quite a few places. This color just adds such a beautiful, I don't know, vibrant tone to her skin, I guess. And it takes all of those colors 
and blends them in and just gives them a completely different look. And over here where I have, I wanna keep that highlight right around the edge of her face, but I have laid these other colors. I'm gonna come through here and just pull these colors through, adding that little bit of vibrant peach color. And this is gonna help for these colors to not look so flat. And then I can come back again with my white and start burnishing everything together. I don't know, maybe I added a little bit too much in this area, maybe not. I don't know, let's see, let me pull some of that up. Anytime you lay down color and you think that you may have added too much, just come back and pull the color up. It's not that big of a deal. There's a lot of mistakes that are not necessarily mistakes that I think, or I feel like a lot of us think that they're mistakes when they're not and they're just, they should be, a, you know, these mistakes that we think are mistakes should be a lesson learned. That is just the way we should look at it because we don't want to end up getting discouraged and putting our beautiful coloring pages aside after we have put so much work into them. And I think over here I want to, let's blend some of that out. And then right here I want to intensify that just a bit with my white. And then over here, let's bring out that highlight and then bring out some of that highlight here. And this is also blending that cream color in. And if you wanna come back and you wanna add more cream, you can do that too. I'm going over the cream, so I may even wanna come back and add a little bit more. But once you decide to go over it with your white, you're pretty much burnishing all those colors together. And so they're all gonna to come together and they're gonna look really beautiful. And in those areas where you left the highlighted areas, her face or those areas of her face is really just going to pop and look really pretty. So we were able to finish her face, well at least the skin of her face, and I think in the next video maybe we'll do an eye and a makeup uh, tutorial. We'll color in her lips, and my plan for her eyes is to give her bright, vibrant, gorgeous green eyes, and I think that they are really just going to make her whole face just pop. <laughs> I can't wait to see what this is gonna look like when it's done. I'm so excited about this page. I've not been this excited about a coloring page in quite a long time, but I'm really loving coloring Mariola Budek's artwork. It's just amazing, and I can really, I don't know, it just really ignites that creativity in me and makes me want to color it. And when you find a page like that that really does that for you and you really want to color it, that is what you should be coloring. I think after this one, I'm probably gonna color another portrait of hers and grab something else from her Etsy store because I'm just, I'm really in love with this. I can't wait to see how her uh, tattoos and everything turn out down here. And I'm trying to come up with colors for the owl as well. If you have color suggestions for this page, let me know in the comments below and I will definitely take all of those into consideration. I hope this video didn't go too long. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you would like to sign up for some private or group coloring classes, you can email me at coloringwithpamela at gmail.com and you can check the description box below. I will have a link to Mariola Budek's Etsy store. I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.